because there has an item that was sold, or the last item he was sold. Yeah, and, and, the, and, the, and the, actually the last item that was sold was on the 18th, and the amount for that was $412.37, and then below that, $344.40. But now I'm getting money pulled out from eBay donation for $355, $500, like those are random amounts, I don't even know where that's coming from. Like I don't know, I, don't, I guess I don't understand is why the money's being taken out, let's see, this is, this is what? 20 days from when these items were sold? Yes, I sir. This is, this is being recorded for PayPal limitations. How are you doing? So basically, we have some. This is like literally the biggest headache on earth. I should have been fishing like an hour ago. What? I'm sorry, what did he ask for? I, for some reason, anyone from EBI, I just can't hear what they're saying. Hey, John, can you just speak as loud as you can? Yeah. Well, like my mouth is basically, my phone is basically in my mouth at this point. First name is Jonathan H I N I. Did you get that? Yeah, I think there's been a problem with the phone line of Jonathan. Oh no. If you could, that's that would be great. I just also realized this too. This is this may not be relevant. I know we have eBay off the line because that was like the worst thing I heard. First of all, you've been really helpful. I really appreciate it. But I listed three other reels on top of the or three sorry, three other items on top of the three other that were sold, and the auctions have ended but none of these individuals ever sent the money. No one ever paid the $500 amount for the specific item that was technically sold. Yeah, so I actually listed six items. Three of them were, were, were actually paid for by legitimate buyers, and then three were just left. The scary thing too is I think there, one, of them, one of them made it up to $9,500. You know what I'm saying? It's a bit of a doozy. <laughs> it's, it's a doozy, right. yeah. So basically, shout out to all the people that just, I don't like i don't like feeding the haters, but huge shout out to all the people that just didn't pay for the reels. I, I literally, I was minutes from going outside the door, I was almost done with my upload, and I was gonna go out there and fish. And I get hit with this. Huge shout out to Ryan though from PayPal. Everyone from eBay sucks. eBay's trash. So, this just keeps getting funnier and funnier. Like, let me just break this down for you guys. Okay, so I briefly talked about this whole eBay auction. I'm trying to do something good here. I tried to do something good. And now it's just a massive mess. eBay wants to literally put me out of business and just make me broke. So I listed six reels. Three of the reels sold by legitimate buyers. The other three were left hanging. No one came through and bought those. But in eBay's mind, it made it seem like someone did buy those because the auction was over and it sold for $500, even though I was never credited that $500. So there was one for $500, another one for $450, and then the whopping $9,500 one, which was the purple reel, and that was the one that was about to get hit with my, who's calling? It's like a mess. If I didn't stop this midway, I would be like negative $10,000 in my PayPal account. But here's the problem. Okay, so like the people that didn't pay aren't the issue here, okay? Those people, their law lives, they're ridiculous, whatever. Let's just throw that away for a second. eBay has the worst system for these charity accounts. What they do is instead of taking that money that was initially paid by the buyer and having it hit their account, which then they handle towards Make-A-Wish, they let it hit your account, your PayPal account. And then two to three weeks later, they then come knocking at your door asking for that money and then take it out, regardless if you have that money in there in the first place. Okay, so I'm back on the line with eBay again. This is the fifth person from eBay I've had to talk to. I've only had to talk to one person. Count it, one person from PayPal. The main issue here, guys, isn't necessarily the fact that I'm getting all this money drawn out of my account. That's a big issue. But the main issue is, is today was my day to go out and film a video for you guys. I was gonna film, like I had everything planned out. And then this just comes crashing down on me like a freaking storm. I don't know what to say, I'm sorry. On eBay, is that right, John? Correct. And three of them actually okay. were legitimate. There's no charge for that one as well. What type of charge for the 500? There is, there is though. No, there's been charge any charges for 500 in our So what happened to that auction? What happened with that item? You're saying it wasn't purchased. What? It wasn't paid for. So what happened to what? the auction? This makes no sense. Oh. So there's two amounts that don't correspond with with auctions that were legitimate. One of which being for four hundred and fifty five dollars, and the other one being for five hundred dollars. It, it, it's a good thing my phone's already smashed because I probably would have broken it at this point. Can you disable 
the agreement for supplies to it on my end, but I can definitely walk the customer through it. Yeah. Can, can you walk Jonathan through that when I event his account balance? eBay basically has absolutely no clue what it, they're doing. They're, they don't even know how to remove the Make-A-Wish donation connection from the items that were sold. So Ryan, one person from uh, PayPal is doing his job. And he's doing it great. Fantastic. This guy's like the MVP of my day at least. I'm not even kidding. I've talked to five people from eBay today and they just, they can't figure out how to use their own website, their own application. It's like they're learning this for the first time. It's also pretty incredible that I've been on the phone for an hour and 20 minutes. That is one hour and 20 minutes I could have spent on the water filming a bomb dope video for you guys. I had a bunch of dope beats lined up as well to use for this video. Just throw that out the window. Here, I'll just play the dope beats right now. Let's just play some dope beats right now. Yep, there's those dope beats. Sick. Y yep. Yep. Uh, click on what, oh, site map. Yeah, as long as as long as those those withdrawals stop coming through. Yeah, if that if that's the solution, then I am I am one hundred percent satisfied. The fact that you uh, X that off and yes. it out. So John, I'm just in the process of getting the very last at the five hundred adjusted to your account. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Well, again, you've been a massive help. Like I said in my last video, first world problems. It's not that big of a deal. Everything pretty much was fixed. Other than the fact that I wasn't able to get that other $355 back from eBay, but that wasn't PayPal's fault. That was eBay's fault because um, they're still living in the early 2000s, which isn't much of a surprise since they haven't changed their website since then. Feels good to be done with that though. Huge shout out to PayPal. So incredibly happy. I just uploaded the video that was supposed to be uploaded two hours ago before this whole PayPal eBay fiasco. I need some fresh air. Yo, I'm going to Chipotle. Do you guys want anything? Do you want a burrito bowl? Burrito bowl? Say, nah, you good. Say, nah, you good. I need some Chipotle after the day I've had today, guys. I I'm really sorry. Like, I have to apologize because I was gonna film a fishing video today. I was gonna go out and, and, and fish and film, and I should apologize to myself because I really wanted to fish, and I wasn't able to. Where are my shoes? Okay, why in the world are my keys over here? Did you do that? Ordering a burrito will probably be the highlight of my day today. What are the fact that they put a Chipotle, like, basically connected to a Starbucks is just the ultimate white girl trap. Like, it's crazy. I never go to Starbucks, so I usually just hit up Chipotle. I only fall for half the trap. That and I'm not a white girl, so. Thanks. It's like the first time I've actually ever filmed in here. I've never really even go in this room. It's weird. What was I gonna do? Oh, I was gonna answer some some questions from you guys. Some questions, I'm gonna read some comments. I've just come to the realization that this is the second time I've sat down and ended a video at a kitchen table. Like, how dope is that? 
The answer is it's not dope. It's not bomb. It's not fun. It's not cool. I don't enjoy it. I'm sure not everyone out there enjoys it. So let's make the most of this and have fun with this part of the video because I really enjoy reading comments. I really do. I promise you guys, these videos will get better. Okay. First comment comes from Million Jake Us. Best tasting soft bait in your opinion. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I I'm a huge fan of coffee tubes because they taste like coffee. An individual on YouTube asks, what's the orange tape on your rods for? I'm going to say this very plainly and simple. I am not a fan of free promotion, especially in the fishing industry. If they're not going to help support me financially or going to help support what I do on this channel, then I'm not going to help support their mission to sell rods. Nothing personal. It's not like I hate these companies. It's just a matter of, hey, you don't want to do business with me. I'm not going to do business with you. You know, it's, it's just... It's just how it works. So, actually, to be 100% truth with you guys, I only have one sponsor, that being Mystery Tackle Box. I work with the dude over at Bait Buffet. The dude over there is just a cool guy. He's a really cool guy. He makes some awesome jigs, so I'm going to help his cause, and he helps me out with what I do. That's all it is. I think sometimes you guys think I have, like, these major sponsors. I've worked with Toyota in the past. I've worked with Carhartt in the past. Um, but I don't have any, like, like, strict, you know, contract with those dudes. It's not who I am. I think a lot of you guys think I'm a sellout. I'm a sellout, but not, not as big as you guys think I am. Anyway, that's your answer for the orange tape question. And by the way, it's not always orange tape. Sometimes it's metallic and other times it's black. I'm trying to vary out the colors just to kind of make everything look nice and neat. So here's a good question. What kind of small e-spotter should I get? Now this question is appropriate because in my last video I actually unboxed arguably one of the best small e-spotters I have ever worn on my head. See, the thing is it all depends on what kind of water clarity you're fishing. Use this for example. If the water is bluish, if, if the water's a little bit of like a blue tint, I personally like small spotters with chartreuse lenses just so I can kind of, I don't know, it's science. It, I can't explain it to you guys because I don't really get it. Actually, I think, I think an angler on YouTube actually kind of came up with this. I'm going to be mostly focusing on uh, chartreuse color because the water is uh, a weirdish blue color. And he explains it a little bit better than I would. Just remember, blue water, chartreuse lenses, wear your small spotters at all times. The moment you take those off, you immediately lose the power to catch giant smallmouth. So with that being said, I'll leave a few links in the description below as to where you can get some recommended small spotters. These are the small spotters I would suggest. What's your best advice for jig trailers? Now, personally, I am a huge jig enthusiast. So this, this question really applies to me. Okay, hang on, one moment, I'll be right back. All right, so with me I've got some uh, some jigs. I've got three different types of jigs, two of each. These are the main ones I usually use, so these are the ones I'm gonna talk about. There's like a few others, but I'm not gonna get into them just because I don't fish them that much. So therefore I'm not gonna, you know, go into it in depth. So the first one that I probably use the most is like a flipping or skipping or some sort of like casting jig. When it comes to this kind of jig, the trailer that I like to use is something that's like super loud, obnoxious, something that has a lot of movement. So like creature baits, um, four inch craws, something with a lot of appendages and a lot of movement that pushes a lot of water is what I like. It's all about the profile and it's all about kind of where you're putting that jig. That's what really matters in my opinion. But when it comes to casting jig, something that's loud and obnoxious and as you see right there, has a lot of movement. So that's that. Uh, with swim jigs, I like something slender, something that represents some sort of bait fish. So I never really, like, really limit myself. I'll sometimes throw craws in the swim jigs, but it's not really my personal preference. I want something slender because it'll kind of complement the slender head design, which allows that swim jig to go through grass with ease. I don't want something with a bunch of appendages or claws or something like that that's going to catch on dead grass or moss or algae. It just, it doesn't work out good. So, a little swim bait. Can't go wrong with a swim jig. And uh, I like to experiment. Sometimes I'll throw a giant one. Sometimes I'll downsize. If they're short striking the swim jig, I like something that's more closer to the hook. So something like this is probably average. Sometimes I'll even go right up against the hook, depending on how they're eating it that day. And then uh, lastly, we've got finesse jigs, which are up there as being one of my favorite jigs. We've got a lot of clear water areas around here in northern Illinois. So I oftentimes will use a finesse jig. With jigs like these, I like something small, compact, and fairly subtle. As you see right here, I've got a jig trailer that barely even reaches the length of the uh, actual skirt itself. 
And uh, with this one, I've got like a like a twin tail grub, which is like super subtle, super finesse in my opinion. Small jig trailers, subtlety is always the way to go. I'm fishing these in conditions where the bass are stingy, or I'm usually fishing it in like cold water conditions. I don't know. I really like finesse jigs though. Okay, so that's my short answer on jig trailers and jigs. Well, classic John B moment. I just completely forgot to film the outro or I deleted it. Whichever, I don't have an outro, so I'm doing it now. This is the next day. I'm about to go fishing and start today's video for you guys. I appreciate you guys enduring through this uh, this hard to watch vlog, but all jokes aside, I actually kind of had fun filming it. It was different, it was a change of pace. I even threw some overly dramatic uh, B-roll sequences in there. That was done intentionally, guys. I don't take my vlogs that seriously, but I do enjoy editing, and I kind of express my enjoyment and love through editing through these vlogs. I never try to take these too seriously. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, keep fishing. Never stop. Yo, I'm going to Chipotle. Do you guys want anything? Gonna get a burrito. You good?